I didn't really know what empathy was. I thought they could fix it. She started to feel a little bit different where she couldn't really what feel good in crowds and other people. Finally, um, her like, urologist started to think, well, maybe there's something more neurological going on here. And I wish I had some kind of even awareness of what it was so that you were prepared for when you get the diagnosis. What are you going to go through the next few years? Becoming dependent on somebody else is really hard. You have to give up your dreams, but you made a lot of things happen right away. Yeah, we had planned to always travel when we retired. Go over around the country for 29 days, went 10,000 miles. So we've done a lot. You, you made it happen. Debbie's always been a very positive, outgoing person, and she hasn't changed in that regard. She, she still wants to talk to people, wants to be active. Um, she's always in you know, good spirits, surprisingly enough. So they haven't taken that personality trait away from her, and that's very important. People tell me, I can't believe how much I see her mom and she's always smiling. That's what I, I get told that. So that's true. <laughs> You're not letting that get down. the Emmett's Coalition and the people involved have been really helpful. You know, you know you're not traveling alone. They've been wonderful with all the information. I jumped right in and got to meet all the board members. Um, they've been wonderful. I felt really backed by not just people in my life, but people who are just are supporting me. I didn't know, but um, our champions of disease. It's awful to know that you're going to die, but in a way it's not because you know you have time to say goodbye. We can still have good conversations, we can yeah. make memories, we can keep so, old ones, and that part's, I'm so grateful that that's not gone. You know, it happens to all of us, just it happened to me a little sooner, that's all. And this way I can say what I want to say to everybody.